was more of a neutral type of uh, outcome which has come after the policy uh, rbi maintain its stand of keeping the interest rate uh, <coughs> interest rate stable and uh, accommodative stand also only thing which uh, changed in this is uh, the target inflation for the year has been increased by the rbi in this policy to 5.8% Uh, apart from that even the gdp growth was also kept unchanged so as such for market uh, i don't think there is any great thing which has happened because of uh, this rbi policy changes uh, nowadays rbi spend a lot of time on uh, management of liquidity and measures for that in this uh, uh, policy statement than uh, the original targeting inflation and the interest rates as lot of liquidity is already infused by rbi and the government so uh, rbi and lot of uh, borrowing has to be done by the R, by the government and to do that uh, rbi is managing lot, lot of liquidity into the system and uh, also the interest rates so uh, additional object which has come up for the rbi is that and uh, that is it is <coughs> managing it through tltro and all so that is again uh, nothing so great uh, impacting any uh, equity market any of uh, we saw some impact uh, post this policy uh, that is to be do with uh, uh, some expectations building up and uh, market was uh, at uh, two year uh, at high level and uh, moved up very sharply in last two three days so some profit booking came and nothing more than that so uh, as such uh, uh, do not see any greater impact uh, in the near term of the policy as it uh, keep the stand going uh, of accommodative stand at the third bi monthly policy meeting today rbi decided to hold all the key rates unchanged through a unanimous 60 vote As far as the accommodative stance was concerned, RBI did continue with the accommodative stance. However, the vote was at 5-1, unlike in June, which also saw a 6-0 vote. The notable change was the deviation by one vote as far as accommodative stance is concerned. Having said that, clearly the narrative and the undertone of the policy remained extremely supportive and also dovish. Right through the policy, RBI repeatedly referred to growth being extremely weak. and fragile and how policy support was needed now more than ever to support this growth to ensure that growth is revived and it is maintained in a durable fashion for the foreseeable future the mpc also referred to both the demand and supply side conditions stating clearly that both demand and supply you know are operating still below pre covid trend lines as far as demand is concerned clearly demand has been uneven and weak As far as supply is concerned, MPC did refer to the exogenous shocks that the world has been facing, particularly seen in terms of higher inflation on a few commodities like oil, metals, and so on, and also because of higher logistics costs. On the much-awaited issue on liquidity normalization, the policy did mention clearly about how it was beginning to take some steps towards normalizing liquidity. RBI did refer. to how liquidity was increasing in the system in the last couple of months with june liquidity being in excess of uh, 5.7 lakh crores on a daily basis moving to almost 6 and a half lakh crores in july and further up to almost 8 lakh crores in august rbi proposed to alter the brr a suction uh, of money from the current inr 2 trillion to inr 4 trillion between august and september however rbi was quick to add that the amount of money being drained out through vrr should not be seen as a liquidity tightening measure because it mentioned that the vrr was part of the overall system liquidity as a result of the liquidity suction rbi did mention that the system would still have residual surplus liquidity in excess of 4 lakh crores which should be adequately supportive for growth coming to inflation and growth on inflation RBI did refer to some of the exogenous shocks which are causing inflation to print higher 
in the last few months. Clearly, some of these were caused by commodities and metals coming in higher. And also in the case of a few specific commodities, let's say like semiconductor chips, which were causing acute shortages, affecting some of the industries like auto. At the same time, like most other economies, RBI mentioned that they would prefer to see through these transitory prints, which are expected to remain higher for a while as the economy takes a while to adjust and come out of the pandemic. Particularly as more vaccinations happen and the economy recedes from the second wave, RBI believes that the normalization will start, which will lead to improvement in both supply as well as demand conditions. Even as it uh, decided to leave or see through the higher inflation pins, RPI however decided to increase its full year forecast for inflation from 5.1% earlier to 5.7%, acknowledging that some of these prints are likely to continue for some part of the next uh, of the remainder of the year. On growth, RBI remained unchanged uh, after having lowered growth to 9.5% at the previous policy. RBI believes that growth is likely to continue at current levels. On uh, do, whereas domestic growth may remain weak, RBI did refer to the growth engine of exports that is likely to fill in for the domestic slack. And as a result, it mentioned that the policy could support and fill to make exports a viable engine for the foreseeable future. Post today's policy measures, we would see some change in the yield curve. The front end of the curve has seen a very strong rally over the last few months as a result of the excess liquidity. As a result of the change in the suction in liquidity that is proposed through the VRR route, we see some bit of curve flattening that is likely to happen. The front end of the curve in the up to 12 month segment may see yields move higher as a result of this change and in liquidity uh, measures. At the longer end, there was nothing adverse as far as the policy was concerned. However, the markets may construe the less than unanimous vote as far as the accommodative stance is concerned as being slightly negative. On the whole, we would expect markets to stabilize over the next few days with the short end yields moving up a little more compared to the longer end of the yield curve. Post today's policy, we would recommend that investors with a shorter and less than one year horizon could continue with products uh, such as the ultra short term and the money market funds. And for investors who have a slightly longer term horizon, we would continue to recommend short and mid products like the corporate bond fund, the banking and PSU categories, and selectively the dynamic bond funds. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views, and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, and LinkedIn.